By the time I was six months post-diagnosis, I was taking 42 pills a day. I have so many different medications that we sometimes joke that COVID is afraid of me. ALS is characterized as a progressive neurological disorder, meaning your nerves break down over time, resulting in progressive paralysis. In my family, it typically starts as weakness, usually in the leg. My voice is going, and I can barely feed myself. It's like, do you want to go to hell fast, or do you want to go to hell slow? There is no cure. There is no effective treatment. It's one of the most terrifying and hardest to treat diseases that are out there. This disease is different. We have to think about it differently. And we have to use our flexibility to think about how we approve drugs for a disease that is 100% fatal. I am ready to accept the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Where's the water? Where's the ice? All right! Whoa! The Ice Bucket Challenge in 2014 drew a lot of attention to this horrible disease and brought millions of new funding into disease research. Because patients die so quickly from the disease, ALS historically hasn't generated the same level of public attention as conditions like breast cancer, which has a large constituency of survivors. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis fatal and progressive neurodegenerative disease in which the motor neurons that control the voluntary muscles slowly and progressively die. And the types of muscles that are affected in ALS, they include everything down, not just the muscles in our arms and legs, but the muscles responsible for breathing and the muscles responsible for eating and swallowing, which means patients, they literally are alive and fully conscious, but can't move at all. The causes of most forms of ALS are not known. However, there are about 10% of the cases that are familial. And in recent years, scientists have started to discover some of the genes responsible for some of these familial cases. Another 90% of cases are so-called sporadic cases, which means that researchers really have no idea about what causes those cases. I think this document's really priceless. It shows just how many generations and how many families have been impacted. My family carries a gene called SOD1, and there's only about 300 people in this country that carry that particular gene. My grandfather, Harold John Lindsay, died of ALS. His brother, Wesley Lindsay, also died, and he was quite young, he was only 30. We believe my mom is the 33rd person to have gotten ALS in our family. After my uncle was diagnosed, he asked his siblings to please get tested. My mother's two other siblings tested negative and then my mother tested positive. Her first symptom was that she couldn't lift her leg up off the floor to get into bed. Within a few months, it became apparent that she wasn't walking very well. She called me and she said, honey, I need to see someone. I was at work and I walked out to the parking lot and I screamed because I knew it was coming. The first thing I did was try and get her into the same trial that my uncle had been in, because I knew that drug would work for her. A drug called Topherson through a company called Biogen. It was for our specific mutation, and it was the best option out there. The Biogen drug Topherson is a very interesting new approach to ALS. It is potentially the first drug that would target a known genetic cause of ALS. Biogen is trying to get Toversen approved based on the fact that it lowers the blood levels of a protein called neurofilament. A neurofilament is something that is produced when brain or nerve cells die. And Biogen is saying that Toversen lowers levels of neurofilament, and that is an indicator that it's likely to slow progression of ALS, and it's doing something good in terms of protecting the motor neurons in the spinal cord. However, in the phase three trial of Biogen's drug, Tofersen failed to meet its primary goal of slowing decline. But they are seeing promising effects, and this drug could set a precedent for other types of drugs against specific genetic causes of ALS in the future. And if we unlock cures for ALS, we will also unlock cures for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and beyond. I was diagnosed with ALS about five years ago when I was 37. And as you can see, Sandra is my voice. The majority of ALS patients have no access to promising treatments. I have not been able to qualify for a clinical trial for over two years. And so what that means 
I'm left to cobble together medicine. Mm -hmm. I'm left to wander on my own, and that does not feel right. What we are asking for mm -hmm. is not for the FDA to lower the bar for efficacy, mm -hmm. but instead to add to their calculation two things. Number one, the serious nature of ALS, and number two, the lack of meaningful treatments. What I need you to do is to approve treatments that are safe and may extend my life. Give me the ability to choose whether I try that treatment or I leave my fate to ALS. There are only three main drugs approved for ALS and they all have very modest effects. The first drug, called Riliotec or Riliozole, was approved in 1995 in the US. The second drug was approved in the US in 2017 from a Japanese drug company, it's called Radicava. And then just this year, the third main ALS drug was approved from Amelix Pharmaceuticals. At least 40 drugs are now in trials, according to the ALS Association. Drug development is a long and arduous process. It can take decades between when researchers first have an idea for a drug to when it gets on the market. Historically, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has demanded that drugs be proven both safe and effective before they're approved for use. Effective in the past has meant that a drug basically directly impacts the symptoms and or effect a disease has on patients' lives. But in recent years, the FDA has often been proving drugs based on lab tests that indicate a drug is likely to improve symptoms or extend life or otherwise impact the clinical course of disease. The accelerated approvals are most common for cancer drugs. People advocating for reform of accelerated approval worry that if you just approve many, many drugs and we don't prove that they're effective, you could have many drugs that are on the market that aren't really effective and all you're left with is risk and cost. Something that you'll hear frequently in the ALS community is ALS is 100% fatal, so we have a very high tolerance for risk. If there is a chance it could help us, we are willing to take it. July of 2021, my mom started Tofersen Expanded Access. She immediately noticed a halt in her symptoms. Things were really good until about Christmas. She didn't have hardly any progression at all. And then by January, she started to progress more. In April, she developed blood clots on both lungs. So she actually had that next Tofersen injection delayed by a month. In May, my mother moved in with my sister under hospice's care, and she decided to stop all treatments. She was tired. It was just really hard on her. August, things got very progressive, and she passed away on August 30th. I think as soon as someone in your family or someone you love gets an ALS diagnosis, and you see the fight that we're up against, you see the limited options, the lack of hope, it kind of turns everyone into a warrior and we all just want to fight, fight for our loved ones, fight for ourselves. Together, you and I, we will end this legacy of death. We will continue on with a legacy of hope. I came up with the idea for I'm ALS in 2018 to put together a nonprofit that was able to help ALS patients and their families navigate the disease and we show them the power of their voice and help them tell their story. For the last three years, we have been able to increase federal funding for ALS research, and we have been able to pass two laws, and we have been able to work with Biopharma and the FDA and NIH to rethink how we approach the development of treatments for ALS patients. When we launched I'm ALS, I told Sandra that my goal was to increase money for ALS research by $100 million in our first three years. And I am happy to say that we have increased it by over 600 million. When my mom was first diagnosed, she said, honey, I don't want ALS to be your life. But ALS is my life. I had a 50-50 shot of carrying the gene. I realized that I needed to be tested as well. I knew as soon as I saw the geneticist's face that my results were positive. And when she said it out loud, I collapsed. I just collapsed in thinking, what about my children? Each of my children have a 50-50 shot of carrying this gene. But as a parent, as a mom, to think that you may have passed something like this onto your children is heartbreaking. But when I was able to pick myself up and look at that screen again, the first words out of the neurologist's mouth were, your children will not have to worry about this. 
I am filled with hope that my children will live in a world without ALS. Numerous drug companies are pursuing ALS drugs, and certainly the standards the FDA develops for approving ALS drugs could influence numerous drug applications that come forward for ALS in the future. So I may be an optimist, but I think we are only a few years away where a doctor can say to a patient, you have ALS, but the good news is I have treatments that we can try for you. Well, it's like that starfish story. Mm. The guy was walking to the beach and he could only throw a couple in, but they appreciated it because <clears throat> they were saved. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.